Radio Czułość. Miejsce, w którym mówimy o emocjach. Z czułością. Joanna Frejus. Zapraszam. Dzień dobry, tu Radio Czułość. Razem ze mną dzisiaj w studio Shai Or. Terapeuta rodzinny i autor książek Cud Rodzicielstwa i Dzieciństwo Rodziców wydawanych przez wydawnictwo Natuli. Twórca idei no właśnie, cudownego rodzicielstwa. Hi, Shai. Hi. Hi. Thank you for, uh, uh, for coming here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for um, inviting, inviting me. <laughs> Great honor. Um, I want to be uh, um, honest with you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. From the beginning. I'm intimidated <laughs> already. <laughs> um, when I saw your book with this really beautiful picture. <laughs> Um, and I um, read the miracle of the parenting mm -hmm. title. I was like, oh no, give me a break. Another man who wants to tell me how beautiful and how uh, great it is to be a parent. I was like, no, I won't read this. Uh. <laughs> And then uh, Natuli uh, called me and asked me to read this. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but can you tell me, I know this is a big question, uh, but let's try to figure this out. What is so miraculous in parenting? That's a good question because it's, it's, uh, it's sometimes very confusing and I also have a problem with it. You know, it's funny that when I started teaching yeah. this uh, uh, with not with parents, uh, I called it, <laughs> the name was Parents with No Fear. Oh. That's the name. Like, okay. no fearful parenting or what. Yeah. Okay. And one of my students, which was more developed. I would read that. Yeah, I would read She that came to me. She was very developed in marketing and in, in, in branding. And she said, you cannot emphasize the negative thing. <laughs> you should emphasize The positive thing. Oh, that's the problem when we speak about parenting. And I, and that's how miraculous parenting uh, came okay. out. And also, I know from my from Natuli that um, in Polish, miraculous is a very kind of religious uh, word. Yes. So it also has in Hebrew, the name is. You should translate it. Um, parenting as Uh, craft of miracles. Oh, the word "craft" yeah is very important. Okay, I, and I couldn't find uh, this in English. Mm -hmm. It was too awkward. Okay, and I understand you because um, I am myself. I don't like big words. I don't like idyllic illusions. Mm -hmm. My work since I started to be kind of since I turned from be becoming being a musician to be a therapist oh, I, in the beginning I was doing some workshops that people were going into really deep processes but then I saw nothing goes into their life it's only kind of in spiritual uh, entertainment you know yeah like a pause in the daily life a pause and then even an uh, uh, how do you say uh, ex escapism Oh, okay. okay. Like it, it looks like you're going into something, but actually you escape from your mm. real life, your responsibilities. And me going slowly and slowly into parenting made it solve this problem with me because when you work with parents, mm -hmm. you work in real life. Yeah. So the name is ambiguous to me too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really um, focus on what works and what is effective to each one that I meet or teach mm -hmm. in his specific life. And I'm really very clear about that. I'm not kind of, um, my ancestors, my, my uh, you can say mental ancestors are not spiritual people. For me, like for example, Alice Miller or Neil from Summerhill, these are the people that I, see as my, you know, spiritual uh, teachers, mm -hmm. and they work deeply in, in, in life. 
But there is a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't take off this name. Yeah. What is it? Um, um, the miracle is that dealing with really great difficulties you have with your child or you have with yourself communicating with your child. Mm-hmm. Most of the people and most of the parenting uh, concepts are dealing with what's right and wrong yeah. and what to do. And what not to do. What to do, what not to do, what's right and what's wrong. That's yeah. most of the parenting and also experts' conversation about parenting, which for me is very boring <laughs> and very shallow. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> because I believe that given the fact that I am a parent, and actually it doesn't matter if you became like me in 35 years old a parent or you became 18 years old a parent, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It even doesn't matter how you became a parent. The moment you choose, doesn't matter if it happens before or after or when your child is four years old, the moment you choose to take this responsibility, mm-hmm. like <laughs> I choose to become the ground for this beautiful, sensitive, dependent, <clears throat> trusting creature. I choose to be the ground for this human being in this world. The moment you choose this, you're a grown-up. Mm-hmm. And I believe grown-up people don't need advice and tips from others. They need inspiration. They sometimes need containment and guiding when, they're ha- when they break down. Mm-hmm. But about mm-hmm. whether to let him see half an hour television or one hour, whether to use this technique or that technique in putting him to sleep, that for me is underestimating a parent. Okay. You But said, the you, miracle yeah, yeah, yeah. is that instead of going all into all these what to do or what not to do, what is right, what is wrong, you listen deeply into yourself what happens in the time you are in this struggle with your child or three hours afterwards. Mm-hmm. You listen deeply inside yourself. You listen deeply inside your child's spirit or soul. And the change come from there. Like, uh, it's a miracle because this is the first miracle, okay? Listening deeply to what happens in, 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 inside me as a parent guides me into what I really want To, sh- to take where I really want to take my child, mm. what are my obstacles or what are my beliefs that I don't want to work upon anymore? What is the inner change I would like to take in order to give my child what he really asks me for? Mm-hmm. This is an inner process, an inner contemplation that affects life as a miracle. You know, I meet people in the clinic, some um, father, 45 years old, He's totally detached from his child for two years already. He's frustrated. He knows what's good for his child. He just doesn't want to listen to him. He comes to me. <laughs> uh, I contain him. Mm-hmm. I listen to him. Mm-hmm. But I also find the right way in the right moment to ask him the question, you know, this child that you talk about, this aggressive, unobedient child, As for the moment, he's the only child you have. When you're going to come home, you're going to meet this troublesome child. Maybe he'll change in a few days, in a few months, in a few years. But all the time that you're focused on how he will change or who he, how you will bring him to change, your only living child is alone without you. waiting for you to, to change your mind about him. So I ask him, what do you think about receiving my help to containing, which means totally loving this aggressive, unobedient, troublesome child now? Mm-hmm. And what is, his, what is he saying? And he's shocked. Yeah. And sometimes he resents for a few meetings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
but you know usually i meet and also my students they meet parents that tried many many other things mm-hmm. and it didn't work for them yeah and they we meet parents that um their love to their child and their connection to their child is top priority in their life mm-hmm. i don't really believe that a parent that is parenting is some side gig in his life would read this book or want this kind of uh, therapy <laughs> yeah yeah it won't work yeah yeah so that's when when i describe him this child and i d- tell him to look at the eyes for example in his imagination of this aggressive g- child and tell me what's beautiful in his uh, blue eyes and big uh, eyebrows and all this mm-hmm. he starts to understand that i am his uh, ally mm-hmm. like i love this child too because he sees that i'm very excited when he tells me about it and then he agrees to give it a chance because you know even if it sounds if it's n- not so conventional it is very logical what i just said this child in that is aggressive is the only child you can love now so what do you prefer to wait a few months or a few years until some other child will come to your house in the same eyes mm-hmm. or to find a way to love the child the way he is now yeah okay and, and what i want to say about the miracle yeah is that he did this shift inside him mm-hmm. with me and he goes home and miraculously all the behavior of his child changes understand mhm and we didn't even talk about the next step in the process which is why does the child um, bring these difficulties like yeah. what all that you know about the seven requests yeah, yeah, that i read yeah. what well, is the source what, what what do he need and we didn't even get there we only i only invited him to move from judgment to containment yeah. with the child as he is and things start to change in their home and this is an example of how this looking inside and uh, reconnecting the parent reconnecting to his love yeah miraculously affects the real communication the real life and the real behavior of the child yeah so this is one part of the miracle okay and this sounds really beautiful this sounds really you know oh you mean too God. beautiful yeah yeah too beautiful <laughs> yes i mean too beautiful you know oh you can just sit for a moment talk to your therapist uh change your point of view or um the way you think which you know it's 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 <laughs> It's hard enough, but yeah, and then you will go home, look your child you look in your child's eyes and feel this deep love, and then yeah, what, all your you troubles just, will vanish. you describe and, it like uh, now we have the uh, music da, 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 yes, da, da, yes, da, yes, da, yes, and those birds and butterflies. It's not a Disney program, <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, you know that people who um are listening to us now. And they can have this idea that oh my god come on yeah. it, 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 it's just, it's it, it's impossible yeah I'm trying everything with this child for the last two years and it's giving me such a hard time you know and when you are saying yeah just you you just need to find this love inside you is <laughs> sometimes I can imagine well you Sometimes I can hear this in uh, um, in my work with my patients uh, that it's impossible for me to love this child at this um, very moment when it's when when he, this child is you know giving me this hard this hard time um, yeah and from the psychological or psychotherapeutic um point I know what are you saying I I understand but also I think that it can be very very hard to uh, to understand for um, someone who you know is stuck with this angry with this um of course maybe you know some other very hot feelings um maybe for last few years I'm thinking about mothers left totally alone with no support trying to um, you know make their way 
uh, to stay alive uh, during the um, in in this relationship with with their child. Um, thinking about fathers who see their child for like half of hour uh, a day uh, because they have some important stuff to do and work. Yeah, that busy. Yeah. <laughs> Business is always busy. Mm, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, parents that are traumatized during their their own uh, childhood or during, I don't know, pregnancy and labor, like mothers. That, um, okay, but, but that, yeah, but this is so you, you say know. you you ask uh, how how can this miracle, beautiful, il- illuminative uh, miracle work with these kind of difficulties? Yes, how you can <clears throat> make it happen, and um, and I know that this is complex question because you know you need to <laughs> write and read two books. Uh, no, but, but uh, actually, it's not complex. Least, no, okay, it's not complex. Uh, but it's important to emphasize. That you know, I'm not a preacher, mm-hmm. okay, and I'm not a religious, you know, something. I'm a therapist, and uh, and I, when we speak here on a podcast, we must, in, in a way, touch general issues and yeah. t- talk about them generally. Yeah. But nothing in therapy or in parenting is general life. <laughs> And so, actually, even what you just uh, suggested is part of the miracle. Because what I said before, that when this parent talks with me about his child, before I ask him to contain his child, I, I contain him. Yeah. And I didn't say that many times the miracle starts when this parent that comes to me and it is used to be judged by himself and by everybody because this child brings shame in the you know family feasts that the grandparents are disappointed and this child brings a fa- sense of failure about school because of the teachers mm-hmm. and and this father like which all, all, everybody knows what's good and everybody knows what he has to do and when he meets me um he starts to see that I'm on the child's side and I don't think there's anything wrong with what he does as a father. And he starts to be able to stop, not only stop judging himself, but containing first his self before of the child. I mean, I am frustrated. Mm-hmm. I am a failure as a father. And that's what he used to think. Mm-hmm. And I invite him to to feel, hey, with this child, I'm really helpless. I have no good idea. And many hours a day when I think of him in home, what I pray is that someone will open up a really good boarding school that I could send him there and, and go on with my life. And I help him to to feel this, I help him to express this, I mm. help him to feel how much I understand him and how much I love him in this situation. And it's easy for me because I was in this situation as a father too. Mm. Okay? As I said before, when you become a grown-up, which means become a, f- a parent, a very important part of it that you're going to fail 40 times, at least 40 times a week on your own agendas. Mm. On your most enlightened agendas, you are going to fail about it. And if you want to be a perfect parent, quit this business and do something else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so I, many times, this miracle starts when this father <clears throat> says all this difficulty with his child. And I, for example, just a very specific example, it's not a general yeah. thing, ask him, I feel very angry about him. And his first reaction, you know, is... Uh, no, no, no. He's a child, okay? Yeah. I said, no, no, no. What you, when you spoke before about how he treats his little sister, what I saw, excuse me, was that you were ready, ready to kill him. Mm-hmm. And after he starts me and he sees that I'm not judging him, mm-hmm. he is ready to say, well, that was true a few moments ago. And then I tell him, you know, I tell him from my experience that uh, 
a, a great change was in my life when my big daughter was one year and a few months. <clears throat> it was a few years after I started to understand uh, the role of anger mm-hmm. as a pure, beautiful, uh, prosperous emotion we, 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 we received from who created us in order to be authentic with what is good and what is bad for us. Mm-hmm. So I already knew that uh, I already few because but as a child I was totally frightened from anger coming from me or coming from other. But growing up and studying and going through therapy, I, I start to get connected with the pure anger of myself and yeah. get, got ways to express this with people that already are growing up enough to understand this. <clears throat> so I can tell this father, you know, I wanted to kill this child. I brought her to my life. We b- 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 were living in a beautiful place in the mountains in Israel. And every day when she comes back from the kindergarten, she controls me. She, I'm like her slave. She get, doesn't give me a moment of freedom. Mm. And all these blue, beautiful mountains and, and the window, I cannot even enjoy them because I'm, okay. <clears throat> and I tell him about this day when I put it in the kindergarten. <clears throat> and I remember this uh, uh, anger letter technique. technique. Mm-hmm. And it's a very f- funny story because we were living in a place where 200 meters to each side there was no houses, only nature. It's very mm-hmm. rare in Israel. Can, it's not like Poland. You cannot find such places in Israel. There's no, not a lot of nature. And I said, well, I, I feel this metal um, shield that's on my chest, which kind of is a blockage. And it's a wall between me and my child because I, I'm angry. Mm-hmm. I'm angry on this creature. Okay, I do an angry letter. <laughs> and then <clears throat> I, <laughs> what's funny is that before I start writing, I go out to the balcony to look if there anybody there. <laughs> and how crazy <laughs> it is. Like the in, inside judgment on this yes. emotion was so big in me. Yes. After all of what I know about anger. This is such a strong message that you can't be angry with your child. Exactly. Yeah. So I tell this father this story and I tell him I started to write. Uh, yeah, there is, there is a rule for how you do this yeah, effectively. Yeah. It's kind of like you crazy little dwarf. I hate you because I'm angry of you because. One, you control me. And I do it authentically and I do it hatredly and I do it in, with big curses, you know, mm-hmm. with this little no, less than two years old creature. Yeah. Beautiful. Sweet, she's out here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and after a few sentences, I pour out crying for maybe an hour. Mm-hmm. And after I, I let myself bring this anger. I could do it alone. I know many, most of the people, many of the people need to do it together with someone. In the first, uh, first step, it's. Sometimes it's impossible to do it on your own. Mm-hmm. With someone that is your witness and is not afraid of your anger and mm-hmm. is not afraid that you are angry at your child. Well, basically, therapist. Yep. And <laughs> the the blockage was gone. Mm-hmm. And my love to my child uh, started flowing again. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing to do except that. Yeah, because you <clears throat> just uh, let this be. Yeah, this negative, yeah. as if negative uh, yeah. uh, phenomena. So I can tell this father, okay, so now tell me, what's this child you want to kill? What's the worst thing in him? And I help him to write his letter. And so I help him to shout on this child. But anyhow, most of the parents reject it on the first place because of what society thinks yeah. about it. Mothers with their little babies, if, when they're breastfeeding, it's the most healing process because... You know, they are expected to be loving and happy yeah. <clears throat> while this child actually is sucking their life out of them. Yep. Literally. Yes. And they need someone to tell them, hey, in this place, 
your hatred and anger to the child is the best thing for him, not only for you. Because now you are breastfeeding him with anger. When you take, take uh, the legitimate place with some ally to give yourself a place to hate and be angry about this child, it will stop being upon him. It will, uh, it, it will be, when, when anger comes out in the right place with the right person, it doesn't control our life anymore. Yeah. You know this, yeah. of course. <laughs> so that, that's why the miracle starts, like I said, when this parent contains himself and puts his si child aside, you know? It's like, when they, like you do in the airplane, okay? Yeah. Did you first take care of yourself? The miracle starts when parents understand that what happens in, inside them, all these people that, the mothers you said that were left alone because their husband goes away and he comes for an hour and they don't have family around them. Okay, I, I worked with many mothers like this and I tell her, she comes, oh, I'm loving my child, I don't know what to do about him, He's, he needs me. And when I get the situation, I tell her, okay, 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 understand it. I would feel the same in, in your situation. But let, let's take two months and forget about your child. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We must focus on you. Yeah, yeah, and this is, uh, I think, the the hardest part too, when you are a mother of a small child, and uh, you need to admit, like, understand that you need to help yourself first, um, because um, uh, it comes with such a, you know, guilty that uh, you, you feel so guilty that you want to do something for you uh, while everyone is telling you that the only one that is uh, important in this situation in the situation is your child and because you know it's so small dependent and stuff like that and of course your your child your child needs you of course and you also write about this, you know, those seven demands. And of course, yeah. it's so important to listen to a child, to yeah, re but you react. Do it. But you can't do it when yeah. you don't listen this to is, yourself. This yes. is actually one of the sources of our destructive society, okay? <clears throat> and I think it's easy to understand. It's not so easy to implement it and change it, but yeah. it's easy to understand that a mother... Uh, that is expected to be happy mm. when her life is partly ruined and yeah. she cannot find a way to love this guy, this little creature that is independent on her. If she doesn't receive um, containment and appreciation from the people besides her, yeah. if she doesn't receive support to take at least one day off in a week, at least two nights off a week, at least one week with one of her girlfriends uh, away with every two months, yeah. we are growing children, if we don't do this, that from the very beginning of their life, they doubt if they are wanted. Yes, because they the, doubt if they are wanted yeah, because they because the, feel. the parent is switching to this uh, surviving mode where there is no place for yeah for this authentic deep love, to listen, giving you a space to explore, giving you a space and and just have fun with you and all those stuff that you that you write yeah. about. And yeah. also, there is the very important. Uh, you, I'm just telling you all the things you know, but uh, you know <laughs> it's, it's the issue. Uh, um, this mother, even if, if she's 18, if she's 38, usually she is a child also. Yes. Like for the first request, for example, that your baby is totally, usually mostly focused on that. The request to feel at home, which means to feel contained, to feel secure, mm -hmm. secure and to feel uh, nurtured, nurtured. Yeah. The three things are the aspects of... It's just safe. Yeah. 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 Of course, she, like you said, she loves this child. She wants to listen. She wants to give him this sense of security. She never received it. Yeah. When she was a child uh, and she was crying or she is weak or she 
uh, didn't want to go to kindergarten. Nobody stopped her life, no mother and no father, to ask her, what do you feel? What do you need now? Ah, this kindergarten teacher is intimidating. intimidating. Ah, okay. Not solving, not doing, just giving her the sense that there's someone that wants to be with besides her totally yeah. when she is weak, when she's in difficulty. Yeah. This didn't happen to her. Yeah. So actually, she is alone, demanded to give her child something she never received. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that when this child is born, usually <clears throat> her first request is racked because she stopped working. Mm -hmm. All her relationship with her partner are uh, totally in chaos. Yeah. Usually, painfully to say, uh, as the pregnancy is a, is a, a proceeding, a, progressing, mm -hmm. he becomes more and more childish, mm -hmm. the husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because he is also a child that never received a home for his parents. Unconsciously, he built this uh, relationship in order to have a mother he didn't have. Yeah, and now she's... Uh, and, and now she's know. focusing on a different child. She doesn't... Uh, he comes home uh, sad from work and she's not focused on him. Mm. So uh, from all these aspects, Sometimes even her friends, you know, if she's mother that her friends are not mothers yet, her friends are bored with her. She, they don't want to be with her anymore. Yeah. She talks she about her child all yeah, the time. She doesn't feel understand. Yeah. She didn't receive the sense of the first request at home with her mother. Even if she did some progress about it when she was a single or when she wasn't a mother, now all the ground she built is breaking down yeah all those strategies <coughs> that she was using all her life they, yeah. they're just not working because he can't use them in those new uh, situation yeah it's like yeah. someone uh, uh, Miron has brought here a, a, a big uh, sandwich two san three sandwiches while I'm not eating four days yeah. and everybody is expecting me to feed you yeah Well, I'm totally hungry. That's the situation of, of this mother. Yeah. So if, you know, it's a dream, but it's, it's your work. But if it would, if it will be, become conventional, normative, you know, it's enough that the partner will do it. The parents of the mother, her friends. Hey, now what you're mostly expected to do is to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when I was working with a pregnant woman, which many times they didn't come for the pregnancy, but they came for the inner process. I many times told them, hey, this is the time to forget about everything and to learn how to make yourself the center of the world. Mm. Because This is the third request issue. Yeah. Because this guy, this little child that is coming, this girl or a boy, They still believe we are worthy to take care of our needs, to be who we are, to lead ourselves, to be to feel unique. Mm -hmm. If the, he, she comes out, this baby, and she meets some slave, some victim, someone that is totally devoted to the baby but forgets totally about herself, yeah. They will not grow to be a self-trusting yeah, person. Yeah, because they, they don't have a source, you know, they, yeah. they don't have a uh, place where they can see this. How how you do this? How you do this, that, uh, you know, how um, how it's, uh, uh, how is it to be a, a self-carrier? Yeah. Uh, I need to see this. Uh, my mother is doing that and my father is doing yeah. that to, uh, um, so I can learn this. Yeah. So that's why we, we I call my what we do. My me and my, my wife in Israel we call it the the silent revolution. Mm -hmm. Because any person that is a parent now cannot uh, uh, base himself on his roots or his family or yeah. previous parenting. Yeah. We are revolutionaries, mm -hmm. and like the question you ask, how do you, <clears throat> as a new mother, uh, put yourself in the center? Mm. You must create it. Yeah. You must be certain about that you're worthy of it. Yes. 
That's must, the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. When you start to understand that you are worthy of it, you know what's the easy part? You know, there's a trick I do with people about what you said now. Yeah. You said the hardest part is to feel worthy of. Yeah. I can do this trick with you. You want it? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I'm a good example, but yeah. No. If, <laughs> for example, if you would, I would tell you, hey, even that you have uh, his four child. Yeah. And he's very needy sometimes, and he's yes. very okay. Sometimes he's not. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he's <laughs> okay. And I'll t- uh, and I'll tell you. Well, listen, Joanna. Um, first step in loving your child is focusing on what you need and putting yourself in the center when you are with him and when you are without him. Mm-hmm. Starting to to ask yourself what is really good for me. In matters of using my time, matters of relationship, matters of eating, matters of focus on my emotion, even matter of hating him when that's needed, okay? Mm-hmm. And you say, but I'm not worthy of this. What mm-hmm. are you talking about? Nobody told me about this. I'm a mother. I must devote myself to my child. Yeah. So the trick I do is I ask you, Cosma, right? Mm-hmm. That's the name of your child? Mm-hmm. You can talk about it? Yeah, sure. Do you think, tell me since honestly, is Cosma worthy of being in the center of his life? Yes, of course. I would like him to feel like that. Are you happy like to that. imagine him growing up to be a man that doesn't fight to take his place or doesn't give up and settle with not if uh, worthiness of his uh, uniqueness, but just living flexibly as a guy that is in the center of his life Is it, does it, this imagine imagine picture make you happy? Yes. So this is your truth. Mm-hmm. What is you? And I, I use this physical uh, law that uh, uh, I don't know to say in English. Joanna is equals Joanna equals Joanna whenever she is. Okay, you know it's mm-hmm. a physical uh, law. Okay, yeah. So if it's the, your truth with Cosma, yeah, it's also your truth with yourself. Mm-hmm. And the reason people, many parents. are happy to give it to their child, but are reluctant to give it to themselves, yeah. is only because their love to their child is pure and, fl- and abundant. Mm-hmm. And their love to themselves is something they only begin considering about. Yeah. But when I t- do them this trick, they understand, okay, never mind how many ideas I already collected about me not being worthy, never mind how much my mother believed it, never much how society believed it, It's not my truth because what I just said about my child, that's my truth. Yeah. So let's find out how to, like you do with water, you know, take the river and you want to open it up so it, feel, it goes into these fields. Mm-hmm. So that's how, I, it's, I don't know the word, but we take this phenomena, this truth yep. that you have towards someone you really love. Mm-hmm. And we start moving it into your yeah. relationship with yourself. Yeah, this is why I love the schema therapy so much. Because there are so many techniques and so many, you know, uh, moments that uh, you can see this equality be- between your mm, actual child child and your And you, your child that you have inside. Yeah? And you, you have been. Oh, yeah. And this is the... Mm, This is the the moment where uh, we are moving to um, talk about the parents as child, yeah, as children, sorry. Yeah. Um, But that's just it reminds me yeah. just about some little thing you ask about the miraculous. Yes. So this is the second miracle. Yeah. The miracle is is that retuning what is love for us, yeah, what we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Agreeing to see that there that what we want our child is love, yeah, which means most of the times what we received wasn't love, yeah, and also it means we can now cr- start to create a family that is based on what is really love, yeah, this changed society, not only parenting, and this is a second miracle, like yeah. you sit in your home you you do things with your child, and miraculously. More and more people are inspired by you. It's not only your child. Mm-hmm. And what you give to your child, this confidence, what is love and what is not love, m- makes out of him some uh, man 
20 years from now yeah. that will be part of a totally different society as respected to love. Yeah, this is a revolution. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have this very deeply um, thought uh, that uh, your parenting can heal your childhood. And it's not, you know, it, it's not the... Um, well, I'm not saying that if your childhood was, you know, messed up, you need to uh, be a parent to heal this. <laughs> uh, uh, to heal this. But uh, this is what um, it was my uh, history. That I deeply feel that m- me, uh, m- as a mother... Um, It's the person that I needed to can heal myself from my childhood uh, traumas. And this is, I'm not sure if you're uh, writing about this, but this is also a miracle for me. Uh, actually, this is part of the basics of the therapy that I teach. Yeah. And um, because these books are part, mostly focused on parenting, yeah. it's, it's not, I don't, remember if it's phrased that, that, like this but the second book actually starts with uh, the, the suggestion that we can only be free and loving with our children and with our patients mm. if we already grew up and let go our loyalty our, to our parents mm. or the lo- lo- loyalty of the hurt child mm-hmm. to calling what he received from his parents love yeah. and what you just said is very I think I really identify with it because in my uh, phrasing when you have uh, your child you become his genuine mother I mean you 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 sometimes you succeed sometimes you fail but you tune yourself to ask yourself what is he asking for yeah what is the What is the love that he wants not what is the love that I learned or what I'm used to give what is the love that he wants mm. that makes you a genuine uh, parent mm-hmm. a real parent and that makes it possible for me and for you to be the genuine parent of the hurt child that we were yes because let's face it majority or the politely speaking majority of our uh, listeners mm-hmm. they don't have parents they don't have good parents no mm. they don't have parents yeah because when you are grown up you're not supposed to have a parent mm-hmm. when you're a child you have supposed to have some woman some man maybe two of them <laughs> that their love will be the ground for your growth Yeah. when you are grown up you're supposed to give this to others mm-hmm. your children your students your clients and so first we are not supposed to have parents and we're not supposed to work on any kind of relationship with these people because they are the parents mm-hmm. they are in charge of the relationship yeah that's a strong idea I think you know in our society where you Um, you know that this hamburger um, idea of um, life now for um, people that uh, 30 40 uh, the hamburger m- means that you need to take care of your small child or children and uh, of your um, old parents so you don't really have you know the, the space for yourself because you are between the them you know it's a terrible idea and it's also a very productive idea yeah for uh, social uh, concepts that are built upon debt and upon guilt yeah it works great for these uh, concepts yes and you know there are many politicians and the uh, economy uh, tycoons that uh, gain a lot that people never feel that okay with themselves but of course but I see it uh, totally different I, uh, like, like the flow of flub is one directional mm. okay that's a new idea the flow uh, of flub is one directional because uh, my two years old child is totally dependent on me 
And you know, it's important to, to emphasize that many times people talk about children, they are not conscious that they talk about some 10 years old creature, mm -hmm. which can walk and run away and curse them. <laughs> you always have to think about the one and a half, two years old child when you want to understand what happens there. Don't skip about on this age, okay? So when my child is two years old, and my belief is about the hamburger, mm -hmm. which is powered by the Bible, of course. Well, yeah. You know, the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Remember them? Yeah, yeah. So there's the it's fifth. All, it's all there, you're right. The fifth yeah. commandment is you should respect your mother and father. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's very uh, suspicious, you know? that in the Ten Commandments, nobody talks about, you know, children are the base of society. I like to say parenting is the workshop where humanity is creating. Mm, yeah, okay. I like I like this line, yeah. And not, not, no genius uh, oh, guy. You know that I actually uh, have the, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, marked. it's like, yeah, it's marked. Yeah. <laughs> and so no brilliant uh, man that uh, wrote these uh, beautiful scriptures mentioned in the Ten Commandments something like, uh, yeah, thou shall, I don't know how beautiful English, thou shall always be sensitive to your child. Mm -hmm. Okay? Only you should respect your mother and father. Yeah. You know, in the agriculture society of these times, it's very understandable. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, um, it affects uh, the beliefs in our society too. But the first commandment is even more important. God says there, uh, I'm your only God. You should never go and uh, listen to other gods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the most, uh, the total authority gives inspiration to all the little authorities like the uh, uh, religious leaders, the politicians, yeah. and the parents. Yeah, and the parents, of hey, course. Hey, to be, uh, to have a th power, to have authority, yeah. it means the weak ones are in debt to the strong one. Yeah. You are in debt to me and the way, the amount you love me decides how I feel good with myself yeah. and you should never doubt me as your parent. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this tortures the, the natural, the healthy way of the uh, one-way float of love because when my child is two years old, she can't, even start thinking what is good for me or what I'm sensitive to. to. Mm -hmm. If she starts thinking this, which we all did as children, yeah. she starts to give up her childhood. Yeah. To be a child is to be taken care of and not to be responsible on no one but yourself. As, And if I want to be responsible, it's, it's when I feel good and when I want to give my parents something out of my free will, but not as a debt to them. Yeah. Okay. Because this is the parentification. Yeah. Yeah. We can see this with uh, with child with children from um, homes that that not not working somehow. Yeah. yeah. Not not enough. You know, unconditional love. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's the only way to believe that you are loved when you yeah. receive it, not as a commercial agreement. Okay. Yeah. You love me and and appreciate me. And I will pay you visits when I'm big, when I'm old, okay? Yeah. Or I will go along your values. No. I can feel that you're loving me only when your love is, you give it to me by your free choice without expecting me to give you anything back. That's the only way I can feel loved. Yeah. And that's so rare in our society. So this hamburger mm -hmm. is a really recipe, 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 mm -hmm. recipe for disaster. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, Shai, do you think that your, well, this is a question. <laughs> do you think that your childhood had uh, anything to do with your idea of parenting? <laughs> wow. I'm, I, you know, at the beginning, I, I almost didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's totally very, very influential because... Um, <laughs> You know, I was born in the kibbutz, yeah. and in, in this communal th sleeping, people, children were. I was taken by my mother when I was three days to sleep with another fifteen children, mm. 
with one woman that was in charge and that I didn't know her. And that's how I, I grew. And I always, I always use this example as to how we are as parents, slaves of our agendas and, and, and values. Yeah. Because my mother, she did this because that was the appreciated values of her society. And she preferred the values of the society on her love. Yeah. Have you ever, um, sorry, if, if you don't want to, just don't answer, but have you ever uh, talked about it, how she was feeling with this, how she felt? Part of the disaster there was that the mothers were so denying okay. what they felt. Only now in Israel, research are starting, starting also to focus on the disaster that the mother went through when they did this. Yeah. But uh, so when speaking with my mother, um, uh, she didn't like to speak about it, and she was very in a denial, like uh, s emphasizing how good my childhood was mm -hmm. and how good I grew up. And uh, you know, she grew in this society, in this uh, system too. Yeah. She was born in the kibbutz too. Mm -hmm. My father. That had a, when he was alive, uh, he was when he died when she, my daughter was four, like when I was forty, about forty. My wife was in a very good relationship with him, and one day she asked him about it. How did how did you feel about your shy sleeping there night after night? And he looked in her eyes and she, he said, "Can you please not talk with me about it?" It's too painful for me. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, so this mean he, he understood what's, what really happened there, but he, it was too painful for him. Mm. But as for your question, growing up in an orphanage, actually, and it's a very unique orphanage, you know, yeah. because, you know, you, you to compare suffering is a stupid thing to do. So I don't compare. But I just say that when you're in an orphanage, three hours drive from your parents' house, mm -hmm. or when you're orphaned because your parents are dead or aggressive, uh, hurting you, you can somehow in your mind create a story that will make it, you know, it's never reasonable, but make it, easier to, to adjust. Yeah. But when your parents sleep hap ha happily 500 meters from you mm. and you know how easy it's them to come and take you night after night, that makes it really hard to absorb this, to live with this fact, you know? Yeah, to, could, to find any sense in that. You cannot. Yeah. You must... Um, like, like we all do in many ways, but I think in this case, it's very, very early. You must very early give up your worthiness to receive this first request mm -hmm. we talk about, and then also the third request to be unique, to, to be that someone cares about what I feel or who I am. Yeah. So I think I am... Um, Something I understood after many years of therapy, <clears throat> as a therapist, I mean, yeah. not my own, not only my own therapy, is that I developed a very deep uh, uh, sensitivity to, to to children, but not to what goes inside them, mm -hmm. you know. And I think it it made it made me take this path in my life. That um, makes it possible for me to help children to become seen, mm -hmm. because when I grew as a child, nobody even knew what noises I make when I have a dream or when I feel cold in the night. Yeah. You know, nobody even started to know when I feel totally alone with the children in the kindergarten or in the school. It was my only me. Yeah. And um, so that's why for me, when people uh, that read the book or people that go through the therapy uh, uh, 
tell me that the child came back to them or that the child um, starts shouting you know sometimes people come when the child is totally comfortable yeah. and cooperative and they, they feel he's giving up yeah and the first phase when they, he starts to see that mother uh, change her path mm -hmm. and she is really interested in what happens inside him yeah the first phase that he starts shouting yes because uh, uh, he knows that she will contain this that exactly. she will that she will be there she won't go anywhere right yeah he knows yeah, he yeah. can trust her yeah. to be on his side never never mind how he reacts yeah sometimes at the beginning the aggressiveness or all the the expressions are extreme but yeah. when he sees she, she she's serious like yeah. it's not just to, like you know she came from a workshop and everything is beauty <laughs> yeah when she, she sees she's uh, uh no decides she's um yeah yeah she, keeping on yeah the, the extreme expressions get, yeah. become uh, very you know you can say balanced you could yeah. say healthy yeah so i think it what I, my childhood really affected it mm. yeah okay <laughs> shy i have so many questions i would like to ask but i'm also um i know that you know it's it's your time and and you are going to kayaking <laughs> in the moment uh i just wanted to thank you you know thank you too um not only for this uh meeting but um uh for everything you do that you are so open with um um sharing uh not only your thoughts but also your history and your emotions um it's like you told that um this very very uh important thing is to talk to each other when we are mm, we are not well when we are in troubles when we are doubting and everything that we know or, or or do and that happens a lot when we are parents yeah. uh, I'm not sure if the the if we were recording already when we were talking about how important it is to um, mothers of very small uh, children to talk to each other about their authentic um, feelings Emotions, yeah. yeah and uh, that this is so you know opening and um, yeah, this is this is something that can make a miracle happen as well, and I'm having uh, this feeling that uh, you are doing this as well. You, you know, you're sharing your your knowledge, but also uh, the part of your history. Um, yeah, I you know I'm just hoping that um, uh, your story and your and your wife's thoughts will. Uh, uh, we'll go further, you know, <sighs> and to everyone that needs to hear this mm, or read this. The mm, last question, uh, the one that I'm trying to ask everyone who's here, but sometimes I forgot. <laughs> uh, can you tell me what is tenderness for you? How do you understand tenderness to being tender? Actually, I don't think it's possible to be intimate or to be in a real deep connection with someone when there's no, not only tenderness as an option, but tenderness as the, the ground. Because that goes for any kind of uh, <clears throat> deep relationship, mm. but it goes it becomes even more essential when we talk about pain or difficulty, because no healthy-minded, sane child or grown-up 
would even think of uh, sh- sharing or becoming authentic or agreeing to acknowledge his difficulty or his pain when the person in the room with him isn't tender no nobody and when people do this when some people that are You know, it starts with, with teenagers and grown-ups many times. When they just share themselves all over, when they got into the relationship and they immediately talk about their deepest difficulties, or when they, you know, demand attention to their emotions when someone is occupied, preoccupied or when someone is uh, not connected to his tenderness, It's because they gave up already mm. the, 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 the worthiness to feel together in their pain. Okay, it doesn't show off self-confidence. It showed off giving up. Like, hey, 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 I, I must have your attention now, which mm. means I don't trust I'll receive your attention. Mm. So the, the inner, inner comp- compass, the inner compass for a, a place or a person or a moment where I can be connected to all the colors all the parts of myself including the painful and hidden ones my hidden the, the compass the inner compass shows yes when tenderness is around and shows no when tenderness isn't available yeah I think it's also about the tenderness for ourselves that I need to be tender to be with me standing with myself right but I I, I must when I Look at the context in the, of the time when where we are talking now mm. usually uh, containing difficulty or staying together in pain is such a luxury such a, it's such a non-existence in our society yeah. that mo- total majority of us will need a um, stable tenderness of From a person from the outside for some weeks sometimes mm. before we allow ourselves to be tender with ourselves that's usually the the yes okay? yes that's and, true and that's why I emphasize the tenderness from the outside yeah it's also for each person that listens to us to, to ask herself or himself how many times this week you You allowed yourself to just sit down, connect to your tenderness, and ask yourself, what does my child feel today or what does my parent feel today? How, how many how, what? And I don't talk about therapists, I'm talking about people. What percentage of the week of your week does this option takes place? You know and it's, and it's very, very important because uh, when you were talking before about thanking me, <laughs> I just wanted to say how much I thank you because I read I read your uh, your website and I just felt that uh, for me okay at least for me you are kind of a partner like we walk together mm-hmm. in a very certain domain mm-hmm. it's not general speaking um, we were all brought up but for generations after generations, To believe that when we are in difficulty we are alone yeah. that's the norm our society like two days ago there was celebrations of the appraisal here I would walk yeah. in the street it's a one de- it's one demonstration you can take birthdays you can take a, a school a, a graduate doesn't mind we are a society of uh, empty shells and walking around running after uh, expre- outer expressions of happiness and success to feel like we are all nice okay you know people on vacations people on celebrations people on festivals people on on the me- uh, media but this happiness is usually disguising the pain we can never share with no one and we can even not be conscious of because we are like you When we since a very very little age we understood 
the very simple equation, okay? When I'm happy, productive, successful, successful cooperative, going with your uh, ideas, my parents, I receive love and I am part mm-hmm. of the family. When I'm sad, sense of failure, aggressive, angry, lonely, frightened, in the best case scenario, someone will try to fix me yeah. or to give me advice. Yeah. But it will only be to bring me back to the main road of everything is normal and all right and yeah. happy. Yeah, like the other one is wrong. You know, you, you can't be there. It's not yeah. the road that you uh, can be. Uh, can you take? Yeah. Uh, so that means yeah. that, that this all, all this happiness is in, in our society is not genuine sense of I feel good mm. or I feel powerful or I feel loved it's it's like drugs mm. you know people take drugs to uh, lower the the level of sadness or loneliness okay so so what I meant when you are my partner it's like each of one of us in our domain with our people we we I'll say to myself I'll, I'll I stand on this main road autostrada mm-hmm. of a normal uh, productive successful happiness that uh, we all and I stand there I, I take a few steps into the road and I say hey 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 come down get down I'm I'm gonna be with you down here with your desperate broken foot self-hatred outer hatred whatever fear you have and the revolution the sound revolution is that more and more people that listen to us are going to say hey hey this woman she's going to be with me when I'm totally broke I don't have to be happy or normal or productive with her yeah. I take off this main road and sl- step by step this main road become a, a A, sh- a very near narrow path and the main road will be a main road where people feel totally accepted when they are broken and when they're happy yeah because they they you know they they will know for themselves and they will be able to also give it to their children that love and, and appreciation is not given to you when you are happy and cooperative. Yeah. you you can be broken or sad or angry as much as you want and I'm on your side with no timer okay yeah so I, I believe I want to thank you because I feel that uh, according to what I read uh, that's actually what we are doing I want to believe so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you too thank To było Radio Czułość. Jeśli chcesz więcej, zajrzyj na mój profil na Instagramie o matko depresja albo na mojego bloga pod adresem www.joannafrejus.pl Do usłyszenia!